you know, Ashwin looks very likely to play, and there's a leak that's been sent out to the Indian equivalent of the Associated Press, the Press Trust of India, saying that Ashwin's going to play. Who knows how much you ever read into those things, but we know that Ashwin's been close to playing at certain points in this series. But, but... With or without, I wasn't aware there'd been a sort of a, a leak. I mean, if you look at the Oval and the history of the Oval, it would tend to not necessarily always favour a spinner, but it tends to be flatter, known as a batsman's track. It can get you know, warmer and dustier, even probably in September, towards the fourth and fifth day. And you'd think Ashwin, if he was going to play anywhere, not to mention the fact, hasn't he already taken a seven for there in his last first class innings? So, you know, when he, he's supposed to be taking a bit of time off and, and being Ashwin, he decided that he'd want to go and play for Surrey, who, of course, being Surrey, immediately said, how much do you want? We'll double it, come and play. Um, so he, he's got re- he's got recent form at the... Uh, Virat Kohli said pretty categorically, as much as you can ever tell from post game, that the six batters plus punt, five batters plus punt, plus plus five bowlers was going to be the way he wanted to go, and I think that makes sense at the Oval, to be honest, because it is a flat pitch. It is one of those pitches that can get slower and lower and easier to bat on as it as it goes on, and unless it takes turn, it can be a very difficult place to get twenty wickets, and you need your uh, you need those extra bowlers and and particularly if Jadeja is available we you know we went to hospital yesterday we don't know exactly what that uh, what the outcome of that was uh, but he went on for uh, for a scan on his knee if i would expect the only change for india to be ushering in for whichever seamer looks most knackered really and which on the basis of that third test is Ishan yeah. Sharma England's combination looks like Bairstow will keep Billings is there as uh, as a backup in case something happens to Bairstow probably Ollie Pope's going to come back in probably at 5 with Bairstow moving down to Six, you don't really want your keeper batting in the top five. Yeah, Chris Wokes and Mark Wood are both fit. And to be honest, I'd expect both to play. Um, I think Wokes in for Sam Curran seems very likely. Sam Curran hasn't performed in this series with bat or ball, hasn't made a significant contribution. And for all that Craig Overton bowled quite well at Headingley, although his wickets were tail end wickets, but still, we've got to take them. And uh, God knows that uh, England would have enjoyed some quick tail end wickets at Lords. Um, I, I think that. You know, you don't really need the extra batting, so that's not that much of a consideration. It's handy, but Robinson is certainly good enough to bat at number nine, uh, probably number eight if you needed him, uh, if you needed him to. And you got, you know, you're a middle, a lower middle order of of Moe and Ali Chris Wokes and Ollie Robinson is pretty handy. Uh, and then I would I would expect Mark Wood to come back in as that point of difference on a pretty flat pitch. Um, so again, the top the top four, which they've kind of stumbled upon with Hamid and Milan uh, the same, then Pope, uh, Bairstow, Moen and Wokes in whichever order you like, Robinson, and then uh, Robinson Wood uh, and uh, and James Anderson. Um, so maybe two definite, probably three change. excuse me, probably three changes. Is Jack Leach not in the squad? There's no chance of two spinners for England in Oval. Uh, Jack Leach is not in the squad. I believe he's been released to play county. Cha- well, he got released ahead of the third test, and he's going to play okay. some county championship cricket. Got it. Which, and at least there is some, so <laughs> it'll get the chance. I think. I mean, the important thing for England is, and they put so much store in it, is the form of Moen Ali. I know they've treated him appallingly, frankly, sometimes. Um, but if he's anything like his old self, he offers you something with bat amble and he's can be your frontline spinner so that gives them freedom to make changes elsewhere if mo and ali for some reason was not fit then you know you do wonder if either parkinson or leach might get a go but mo and ali showed enough um at headingley to i think give england some comfort that you know, they have him, then they have Root. And if they really need David Milan to throw in some licorice all sorts, um, mainly leg spin based, you know, they, they've got options when, when when they need it, if, they, if the wicket's turning. Uh, uh, can get you even, five for, don't well, yeah. Can get you if the oval starts turning that much, <laughs> then, uh, the, then I think we're in for a, in for a very short test match. Um, but England clearly don't want a front line spinner in that. In that sense, otherwise Jack Leach would have been playing this this whole summer. Mo and Ali, having said that, has now has more. I know he's played more Test matches, but has more Test wickets than Jim Laker. Um, he is a very decent Test match spinner. Um, he wasn't really needed, to be honest, at Headingley, but when he was, you know, getting that ball to turn sharply on a not particularly spin friendly pitch uh, at Headingley to bowl, 
yes, Mohamed Shami, but it's still a very good delivery. For and he, it, it, yeah. it's oh, coming out of it. Mohamed Shami, frontline batsman at Lords. Well, well, he was fantastic. Quite, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think Mo and Ellie wasn't going to be banging in the ball halfway down at him. Uh, <laughs> but but Mo, the ball's coming out of Moen's hand really nicely. Um, I think in the he took some wickets in that second test at Chennai, but he was a little bit erratic, and the ball was lots of drag downs, lots of full tosses. But it's coming out very nicely. It looks very controlled. He's getting some revs. He's getting some uh, some dip and some drift, even when the ball isn't turning. And with the bat, he's very handy as a number eight, um, which is it's a strange. Uh, he he plays a role for England in for England that is completely different to any other role that he's played in any other in any of the first class, you know, in first class cricket, he's a number three batter who bowls a bit. It's completely the reverse for, for England, but he he's done a very good job for England in the past and he's not probably ever going to get back to that batting peak, but he's certainly very useful. Um, and uh, I'd say Chris Wokes coming back in is, is an improvement with bat and ball over, over Sam Curran and <laughs> probably would have played Headingley had he been fit. In fact, I think he would, might have played the whole series had he been fit. I remember Chris Wokes' 100 uh, in Lords the last time he was. So not only with the bat, I think he'll be a good addition to the England squad. Uh, yeah, I mean, more more recently, he and Joss Butler won the, the test match against Pakistan at Old Trafford with a magnificent partnership. Uh, he's he's At times, Wokes has looked like a top six test batter. I mean, he's got... he's The one thing I would say about Chris, uh, and you know, I'm sure you know the Indian bowling unit will be looking at this, in... Both the last two Ashes series, he's been vulnerable, very vulnerable to the short ball, particularly from Pat Cummins. And I wouldn't be surprised if that he starts getting a lot of short balls as soon as he comes to the crease. But he's a very, very useful um, number seven batter. So I, England could end up going into this. I don't think I don't know that Pope for Butler necessarily strengthens anything, but I think they actually could go in with a stronger bowling attack than they did than they had at Headingley with with Wokes and Wood in. Uh, assuming that's the way they go. Yeah, I think I think Wokes for Curran is the obvious like for like. I think even though I genuinely think the ECB likes to play home players, you know, we had three Yorkshiremen at Yorkshire. <laughs> um, well, Dowd Milan, Yorkshireman, but you know what I mean. Um, but I, so I think they, 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 they give those, those opportunities up lightly. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, reluctantly, but I do think Curran just hasn't quite delivered yet and Wokes, they want to give match time to. The, thing against Wokes is having what did he do trip over his own trousers or something he, he did something uh, bizarre he, didn't he? he he slipped down the last three stairs in his house <laughs> how, how or why that happened to, <laughs> is, a, is a mystery but it's right up there with weird weird sporting injuries isn't it um but so it means he, he, he he's massively out of match practice and he hasn't as like other players had you know a couple of county games to sort of get his, get himself shifting <laughs> and and eye in and stuff, but then you know that's the risk that's the risk that uh, the ECB is prepared to take, and it is an it is an obvious choice, and he is a quality player, so I, I think that's a no brainer. Um, I'm funnily enough, I know they want the extra change of gear that Mark Wood brings you, and you're just immediately discounting Overton. I've just got a feeling. They might stick with the seam attack as it is, even though Mark Wood is available. I think that's a more marginal call. Um, certainly, I it's it's purely conditions based. Um, I think Overton is a useful bowler, and if Wokes hadn't been available, I think that him doing Curran's job essentially, or mm -hmm. or him batting at eight and being that sort of fourth seamer might have been the way they would have gone. He's probably an upgrade on 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 Sam Curran with the ball at this stage as a test bowler um you know he can be an awkward customer you know he gets the ball to move off a length and he gets that awkward bounce but I think that he and Robinson are somewhat similar and I think on a on a pitch that is probably going to be flat unless it turns out very different to what we've seen it over the last few years I think that he could be a little bit unpenetrative and that India might want that point of difference in in Mark Wood and have Anderson Robinson um, and and Wokes doing the um, doing the longer spells. It's a very, I think there's a nice balance to Anderson, Robinson, Wokes, Wood, and Moen as a five man attack. Yeah, you've got the change of gear in there. I think not sure Jimmy would like to be hearing he's the workhorse for the long spells. I, you know, at the age well, of 160 or whatever he is, you know, I think 
I think he's short, sharp bursts of, of brilliance. I think is the direction he'd prefer to go in. Though that said, he he was magnificent when he needed to be. Yeah, I know there's been. been a... And sorry, Shane. No, I was saying coincidentally, Shane Wong called Sam Curran bits and pieces cricketer. What about that, Sanjay Manjrekar like Jareja, Shane Wong, Sam Curran. <laughs> So it might be a little yeah. bit more justification in uh, in what what Warren has said. Although I did also see that Warren wanted Liam Livingston in this test squad, which is not the most ridiculous shout, but wasn't never going to happen. Um, I'm a little bit surprised. I'm just trying to think if I don't think Sam Curran's ever played for a T20 side that Shane Warren coached. So let's see what that. So let's see if that changes. If that uh, if Sam Curran ends up as a Rajasthan Royal next year or something. Yeah, um, big option coming up, so definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, Sam, Sam Curran's a good, uh, you know, I think people have gone a bit overboard with the criticism of him, but I, he just hasn't given England enough with bat or ball in this series yet to keep out the player of the proven ability in class of yeah. Chris Wokes. Fourth, fourth seamer and number eight is, is a tricky role. <laughs> you have to find a way to do something spectacular to justify it, and he, he hasn't hasn't taken it. And I suppose, you know, what was it? The thirteenth king pair at Lords. We worked out was that's never gonna, that's not gonna help your your confidence. Although to be fair, he 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 he, he came back a bit uh, it's, headingly. It's been it's been cameos and it's been little chip ins here and there. I mean, Chris Wokes could easily open the bowling for you if you wanted him to, uh, and could easily bat seven and provide you genuine runs from from number seven. Um, I don't know that he's quite as good with the bat as Jadeja, but it's pretty close between those two. Yeah, he's got previous against India, of course, as well. But uh, at Lord's, mm -hmm. though, not the Oval. <laughs> mm -hmm. 